to It's a Lovely Day with Lovely Water. It is a new day, but in spite of the evils of this present world, God is faithful. You know, David said in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mind. May God bless each of you in Jesus' name. And you guys, come on. Spend a little time with me in the Word of God, where we will see examples of God's love, see examples of His peace, see examples of His goodness, see examples of God's faithfulness. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. May God bless you again in Jesus' name. Come on. Hello everyone, this is Lovely Waters with It's a New Day with Lovely Waters. And again, we have a lovely day. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're back here at the lake and I mean it's been a beautiful day all day long. May God bless each of you. Welcome to our channel, welcome to our show. I'd like to, I have some, uh, 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 a series basically that I'm starting again. I usually do a lot of series. And my series today is a continuation of the series that I started on the last time. And we were talking about our obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. So let us open up with our word. And our word is coming from Matthew 6 and 33 that tells us that we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things shall be added unto us. Amen. That's a scripture that's been with me ever since I first received Christ. And that's, I'm not gonna tell you how far back that was, but that was one of the scriptures that God sent to me to help me understand that regardless of all the things that I had been living for and focused on in my life, that he wanted me to understand that I had to make a decision to seek first his kingdom. And then all the other things that I desired, all the other things that I sought after, all the other things that I wanted most in life would be added to me. This was a promise that God gave me when he came into my life. Next thing I want to do is to open up in prayer today. And uh, if you'd like to uh, bow your heads with me, then you're more than welcome. Uh, you might see me look off a little bit, whatever, but we've got a lot of people coming and going just like the other day, but we're going to continue to hear what thus saith the Lord. Father, we thank you today, oh God, for a beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings of this day. Lord, we thank you for our lives today. We thank you for our health today. We thank you for the strength that you've given us to be able to walk and go to and fro, to put on our clothes, to feed ourselves, oh God, and to, Lord Jesus, go out and come in. Father, we thank you above all things that, Lord God, you've blessed us to be able to bring you glory today. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for those who have come today. We pray, Father, that you will bless them and that, Lord, you will give them a word today. We pray, oh God, that you will minister to each and every soul. We pray, oh God, that their lives will be changed. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you will give them a word from on high in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you today again and again and again. Lord, we can't thank you enough, oh God. And as I always say, Father, Lord God, we, oh God, should bless you. And Lord, I will bless you at all times. Your praises shall continually be in my mouth. Father, we thank you for this beautiful summer day. We thank you that summer finally has come. And Lord, we thank you, oh God, for the things that you're doing for us. We thank you for answering prayer. 
We thank you, O oh God, for being our very present help, regardless of what situation or circumstance that we may be facing. Lord, it's good to know, O oh God, that you are with us in Jesus' name. All right. Praise the Lord. So we thank God. And as I said again, our lesson or our message today is entitled, Our Obedience is Better Than Sacrifice. And I wanted to start by highlighting distractions. And I just wanted to say that we need to realize that life is full of distractions. There are always things coming to distract us from doing the things that God would have us to do. It's like no matter how hard we try, it seems like every time we go to do something good, there's always something bad that opposes us. It's always something to cause us to fall or cause us to become tired or cause us to become weary or cause us to be uh, distracted. So we, I want to highlight distractions today that they are so important that we have to watch out for those things that come to hinder praise God, God's will and purpose in our lives. So I want to uh, say that our lesson's coming from the book of Ezra, and it's coming from the book of Ezra 4 and 5. In the book of Ezra, I'm just going to give you guys a highlight of what happened. So we have here the prophet um, Elijah had prophesied a hundred years before that King Cyrus would free God's people out of Babylon. And now it has come to pass. King Cyrus announces this and uh, people were excited and they knew that it was because the man of God had said that this would be so 100 years prior to this date. And so the people were set free and they went back to Babylon and they returned to Judah, to their homeland. And we want to understand here that we have now a man by the name of Zerubbabel. He organized a group of people, a group of Jews, praise the Lord, in Judah. And also a high priest by the name of Joshua. They built an altar and they began to offer burnt offerings there. Moreover, they decided that they would rebuild the temple. Praise God. As they began to rebuild the temple, they were excited about what God was doing. And so they had finally laid the foundation. The foundation for the temple was completed. And they began to celebrate. But soon after, the enemies of God's plan and work was disrupted for a very long time. During this delay, everyone began to focus on building expensive houses for themselves instead of staying focused on completing the construction of God's house. Now, I, I, I wanted to interject here, and it's a, it's a human thing to be distracted. It's a human thing to uh, get our mind off of what we are supposed to do and to be, lose our focus. But God is telling us today that whatever he has told us to do, we should stay focused. And even, you know, times like this and the season we're in and the end times that we are experiencing, it's going to take prayer. We have to pray and ask God to help us to obey him because we want to obey the word of God and obey his purpose and his will in our lives because we are not here just by happenstance. So I want to tie this up in conclusion. And I want us to remember that when God, as he did the Jews, when he releases us and he sets us free from any type of bondage, he wants us to work and to serve him. But if we let opposition if we let distractions pull us away from his plans for us, we will miss out on God's best blessing. I don't know about you, but I want God's best blessing. I don't want to give up uh, God's best 
for something less. So we have to focus and we have to be intentional. We have to understand how the enemy works against us. So we must get back on task when we discover that we've strayed. And we need to work intentionally to, to stay on task. And we will soon have a real reason to celebrate. All right. So I just want us to remember that we must remember to be intentional. Again, that word comes up again. It takes intentional. We have to be intentional by staying focused on God's plan and his vision. His vision, not our vision. Praise God, I praise him so much because this word was relative and it was relevant. The foundation, as you can remember, the foundation was set, but the enemy began to go behind their backs and to cause trouble. And therefore, the construction of the temple was shut down by one in high authority. And his, this, this disruption stopped the construction of God's house and the workers ceased. Then, as this had happened, the workers became distracted. They began to think about, okay, well, hey, I'm going to build me a house. I'm going to have this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But they had forgotten that they had not completed what God had told them to do. So I just want to say today that let us stay focused. Whatever God had told you to do, then you focus on it. We have to keep our eyes on the prize. And that's our subtitle. Eyes on the prize. Praise God. And we have to have affirmations to remind ourselves what we are about the business of doing. And we have to stay rooted. We have to stay grounded in the word of God. And I think that um, that was one of the things that I was sharing yesterday. Because, you know, the enemy don't want to see us do anything for the Lord. Every time we raise our hand to do a good work for the Lord, the enemy will always try to intervene and try to cut it off. And so, therefore, we have to prepare ourselves. That's why we have to be intentional. Because we already know that there is a force, praise God, that is greater than ourselves that will be coming to try to stop the will of God. But see, the scripture tells us the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not carnal, but they are mighty through God for pulling down strongholds and casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing those same things under the obedience of Christ Jesus. So we know that we don't fight against flesh and blood. We have to be reminded of that too. But we fight against principalities and wickedness in high places. You know, I heard a preacher said one time that if we could just see, if we could only see the wickedness of the underworld all around us, then we would be, some, some of us, our hearts would fail us because of their wretchedness. But that's why as the old saints used to preach and teach and the mothers used to pray, oh my God, save us, cover us and protect us from evil, seen and unseen. Praise be to God. So I just want to admonish you to make a mandate whether you already have it, I'm not saying you don't, because many people do, but there are also many that don't. Make a new mandate. 
that is based on a recommitment or a commitment to obey God. Sometimes we have to just start one step at a time. Amen. But nevertheless, God is there. Wherever you are, he is there. And he is present with you. Because his words say he is our present help in our time of need. You are not alone. No matter how hard it is. And it doesn't matter what time of year. It's beautiful out here. And I mean, you see the glory of God. You see the beautiful trees. You see the sunshine. You see, praise God, the glorious water. And you feel the comforting breeze. You know that God is good. We know God is good. But we also know and we should be aware that he is good and present for you too. He's good just for you. And I know some people out there are going through some really tough situations right now. Until where they're just pretty much numb. They can't even, they don't know what they feel anymore. And some of them have labored for so long with that situation. But God wants us to stand still. God wants us to pause. God wants us to make a new decision. A new decision meaning to do something we've never done before. Meaning that we are seeking new heights, higher heights. We are seeking deeper depths in Christ Jesus. So as the old saying goes, if we want something that we never had before, we have to be willing to do something. And I'm talking about something good that we have never done before. That takes commitment. That takes meditation. That takes prayer. That takes humility. That takes uh, prayer. That takes everything that we can muster. Amen. But we can, as I stated on the last message, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So I just want to reach out today and pull somebody up. I want to reach out today and throw my arms around somebody and say, come on, you can, you can do it. You can make it. Amen. Through Christ Jesus. He wants us to focus. Stay focused. You know, I thought about examples of focus. I thought about a student. When a student is a student in a school, he or she has to make certain that they focus on the assignments. First of all, the due date of the assignments, the assignments, how to go about accomplishing them and doing them well, seeking the, the help that they need and having them in on time and in doing them successfully. But they're going to be parties. They're going to be, uh, uh, all movies, they're going to be time when they want, they could sleep in. It's going to be a lot of things that, that could distract that person. But if that person doesn't have focus and a commitment, amen, to keep their eyes on their prize. And you know, I tell people often when they go to school, when I talk to young people about education, I tell them, hey, look, never go to school, say, I'm going to college. Yes, I'm going to college. Don't ever say that. Always say, I'm going to college to get my degree. You see, that, that you know, anybody can go to college. A lot of people have been to college. But so many of them did not retain the commitment. And many of them, they fell by the wayside. I thought about uh, when it comes to being focused on building something. 
I pass every day houses that have been a, that they were started. Someone started construction on that house, but it looked like it was a great structure, a great foundation, a good location. But at some point, they just threw in the towel, and the house is still there, half built, and has been there for years. Somehow, for whatever reason, they lost focus. Somehow, for whatever reason, they lost their commitment. And the house was not built. So we have to stay on task. And even other houses, I've seen people start constructing things, and they take two years to build it. And I don't know, sometimes it's because of funding. Sometimes it's not always about funding. It's about, sometimes it's about commitment. But we have to keep our eyes on that prize. We have to, anything we want to accomplish in life, we have to stay focused. Amen. So I, uh, there's, it's, just, it's just a million things that I could um, bring up or share about what it means praise the Lord, to stay focused, to be have an intentional focus. So that's what gives us victory. That's what brings us good success. All right. So I thank the Lord for that. And I thank God for, you know, again, I always thank God for an opportunity to come. I thank, I always thank God for an opportunity to share the word of God. Amen. And I, uh, you know, I, I think that it's, it, you know, the things of God are too important. Obeying God is too important for us to be naive because we can miss the mark being naive. We have to take God's word seriously. We have to take the commitment that we made to him seriously. We have to be serious even when we consider making a commitment to Christ. Because our very soul depends on it. So I was, uh, I know I was speaking to some youth the other week, last week. And I happened to minister to uh, this small group. And as I was uh, ministering to him, to them, there was one young man that he kept giving me these eyes like, you know, old oh, lady, you know, you just put your, put a sock in it, you know, <laughs> like, I don't want to hear all of that, you know, that, you, you know, I wish you would just, you know, just, you know, don't look, don't, don't try to minister to me because I am not having it, you know. But I do know that God gave me to pray for that young person because we never know. Young people, middle-aged people, elderly people, we don't know our days. It's the time, as I always try to admonish before I go off of the air, is that time is winding up. God is soon to return. And we need to pray for a clean heart and a right spirit that God will open up our eyes so that we would see the importance. Most of the trouble that we end up in this life is due to disobedience to God. It seems like it's just we because of the flesh that we came here in is so much easier. Uh, it's so difficult for us to stay focused on the word of God. But God has sent his son that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And even though the, the days are beautiful, the weather's hot, and people are swimming, and they are hiking, and they're doing all their summer sports, we still need to look around us and we still need to remember that Jesus is our focus. That he is still calling us and telling us that wherever we go, we are to be obedient to him. I don't care if it's in the parks. I don't care if it's in, uh, on a vacation. 
to another country. I don't care if it is uh, we're on a plane. We should seek an opportunity to share Christ because it doesn't make any sense to have to be full of the word of God and you keep it to yourself. God, as it says in the word, we are to be, praise the Lord, like a house that is set up on a hill and we're supposed to let our light shine down in the valley for those who do not know Christ. And I'm saying this that to those all around the world today. We are God's children. No matter where we go, in whether we go to Africa, Afghanistan, whether we go to New England, or whether we go to England, whether we go to Britain, whether we go to um, um, anywhere, just anywhere in God's great big old world. I want to reach out today and say that God wants you to take time to hear his word. Because, you know, sometimes we don't have time. We don't take time. And you never know what you might hear. You might hear something that you never thought you would hear. And I promise you, you will hear something that will make a difference in your life. So on our daily, as we go daily, let us, as I was reiterating, it's a daily thing. When we wake up every day, it's not simple. It's not an easy task. That's why Paul said, I will and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Obey God. Praise God. And I will be praying, amen, that this series will be a blessing to myself and everyone all around the world when it comes to obeying Jesus Christ, who came that we might have eternal life. And I want to say, if you don't know him, then I want you to seek him and stick with lovely walks. And we're going to be talking about how to receive Christ. All you have to, have to do is say yes. So I want to say, God loves you. So do I. It is a blessed day. Have a good day.